Can I describe the Big Bang Theory, and do I think that it's real? Okay, yes. The Big Bang is a model of how we think the universe began, and it is the best model that we have. It seems to explain most of what we see about what's going on, on out in space. Basically, what we've observed is that distant galaxies are moving away from us. And no matter where we look in the sky, we see galaxies moving away. And we think that's because the universe itself is expanding. And if the universe is expanding, that means if you sort of, you know, run the clock backwards, it gets smaller in the past. And there must have been some point in the past, like if you're inflating a balloon, right, and you run the film backwards, at some point in the past, the balloon was at some smallest point. And we think the same is true for the universe. You run the clock backwards, the universe all existed in one point at the same time. And it's at that point we think that's what the Big Bang was. That there was just a sudden moment and the universe itself was created and started to expand. All the matter, all the energy, everything was packed into that, that one spot at one time and then it started to expand. But people like to think of this as sort of like an explosion in space, like if you're blowing up a firecracker or a bomb or something. But that's not really true. That's a misconception. But the truth is much harder to understand. We think that the Big Bang was not an explosion in space. It was an explosion of space. Space itself formed in the Big Bang. There wasn't space before that. There wasn't any time before that. When the Big Bang happened, it formed space. It formed time. And space itself started to expand at that moment. But it, it, as weird as it sounds, it sure explains a lot of what we see, that we see galaxies moving away from us, that we see certain structures in space, that galaxies appear in clusters. Um, we see all sorts of other things that support the Big Bang. A lot of people say they don't believe in the Big Bang, but it's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of evidence. And really, astronomers, if the Big Bang were not right, if we thought it were wrong, we would throw it in the trash can and start again. Um, we've had to modify it. We've had to change it a little bit. There have been some things that we think, well, it doesn't explain this very well, but maybe this happened later. So the Big Bang is really a model of what happened right as the universe formed. After that, we've added things to that theory to make it more accurate. But we really do think that this model, you know, encompassing all the stuff that we've, done, we've looked at and, and added on to it, we think this is it. This is the best explanation of what's going on. There's still details we don't understand. Uh, there's a whole lot to learn about the universe, uh, the universe itself, let alone the stuff in it. Um, but the more we study it, the more we think the Big Bang is right. Um, and let, let me end this with one thing. Science itself is not like a book you pick up and read stuff and say, oh, this stuff is what's going on. Science is a process. It's almost like a living thing. We learn from, from observations. We, we observe things in, in space. We observe things in the classroom. And we study them and we say, why is that happening, I wonder? And we come up with a guess called a hypothesis. And we say, maybe this is why that's happening. And then we try to observe more things to see if our hypothesis is right or wrong. And we build on it and build on it and build on it. If it turns out that the hypothesis is really strong, we, we, we call it a theory. It kind of graduates and becomes a theory. But you know what happens? If eventually we learn something that shows that that theory is wrong, out it goes. We start again. Or we modify the theory to make it fit um, without trying to change its, its, its basic stuff. If the basic stuff is wrong, it's gone. Science learns. Science grows. And so the, the more we do it, the more we observe things, the more we think about stuff, the better we get at it and the closer we get to what we think is truth. And so that's why science is so cool. It learns and it changes and it corrects itself. If we find something that's wrong, we say, huh, that's wrong. We better look at this again. And so admitting that you're wrong is an important part of science. Observing what's around you honestly is a critical part of science. And that's why we think it's so good at understanding what's going on. And so you guys are doing science in your classroom. By listening to me, you're kind of doing science, but you know what? Stuff I said might be wrong. You need to think about it and say, you know, that guy's, you know, he's an astronomer and everything, but something he said was wrong, and I think it's this. You're doing science. Science is asking questions. Asking questions is the most important part of science because that's the only way you can learn. So I'm thrilled that you guys had such great questions for me. I was really happy to be able to answer them. I hope if I couldn't answer them the way you wanted, 
that you'll go online, you'll go to books, you'll ask other people, and you'll learn more. Because when you guys are older, maybe you'll be scientists. And even if you're not a scientist, you could be a poet, you could be a teacher, you could be anything. Just asking questions, just learning about the universe around you, that makes you a scientist. So everybody's a scientist. And I, I, I really hope that you can keep this up and that when you're older, you're still interested in all this stuff because it is so much fun and there's so much beauty and so much joy in figuring this stuff out. And I know that you're gonna, you're gonna love this stuff for the rest of your life.